Hello everybody, I'm Paul Beckwith and I just wanted to do this um, brief video on a paper which just was uh, published uh, about a week ago. The title is Predictors and Correlates of Self-Reported Climate Anxiety in the United States. So people are clearly exhibiting various amounts of anxiety over extreme weather events, over the massive flooding that's been going on in the US. And also um, there's, you know, a component of the population that are climate deniers and they're not seeing what's going on. And that may be, some of that may be contributable to the psychological ability of humans to ignore things that they don't like, ignore things that scare them, they would turn and look the other way and deny. And it's mostly white males that are in that category. And it's kind of like, a, you know, a, the male ego strong, you know, climate's always been changing, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, sort of viewpoint. So there was a survey done, I think it's uh, with 2000 people from all different demographics and age groups in the US and the results were just published a week ago. So let's have a look at that. I'm just, um, there's good references if you want to study this a bit earlier, you know, a bit earlier, a bit in a bit more detail. Um, you know, the idea of eco anxiety or climate anxiety, then this is the place to go. So this came across my feed and it's a PLOS uh, open access peer reviewed article and on you know this is this is the uh, PLOS site and you can just uh, access the data download the PDF over here which I did okay so this is the PDF um, the pub the the authors are in Simi Valley California I'm not sure what for good measure is. I searched it, but couldn't find something obvious on it. Okay, so climate change has many adverse human health effects, including increased self-reported anxiety. However, self-reported climate anxiety may also motivate productive climate action. So the online survey was done among U.S. residents, and it was developed um, it, it, well, it basically was based on an academic scholarship, well, they say prior scholarship, so academic work on, you know, questions like the questions that you ask are very important, obviously. So they sam the sample was 2,000 U.S. adults aged 18 plus completed the survey. And significant predictors of self-reported climate anxiety include, no surprise, greater media exposure to climate change information, more frequent discussions about climate change with friends and family. You might want to say not just discussions, but arguments. The perception that climate change will soon impact one personally. And this summer, I think many people are finding out that that's the case. It is impacting them personally. People, younger people are more affected and females are more affected. Self-reported climate anxiety is associated with both positive and negative emotional impacts, including motivation, interest, sadness, and tension. It's associated with greater engagement in environmental behaviors and people that volunteer for environmental causes and access straightforward climate information with less scientific jargon, showed particular potential for anxiety reduction. So me trying to explain science with, with as little scientific jargon as possible is actually good, a good way to potentially reduce your anxiety, according to this paper. You can let me know if that's the case. And uh, so basically, you know, they talk about some basic things about the World Health Organization calling climate change the biggest health threat that humanity faces today. So let's just have a look at that. World Health Organization, the biggest threats to humanity today are climate change and air pollution. Climate change is de 
described as a fundamental threat to human health, driving humanitarian emergencies like heat waves, wildfires, floods, and storms. Air pollution affects nine out of 10 people globally. It's linked to seven million premature deaths every year from diseases like cancer, stroke, heart, and lung disease, especially from PM 2.5 particles, particles 2.5 microns smaller. And now, you know, if you watch my last video, you learn about particles much, much smaller than 2.5 micron, actually particles under less than a micron, um, plastics, nanoplastics that are ubiquitous now in the oceans and the air, the soils in, in nature, you know, all placed, all, all, all there as a result of the pol widespread proliferation of plastics in, this, in the 70s onwards. So climate change and air pollution is number one. Non-communicable communicable diseases like heart disease, stroke, cancer, and diabetes. Um, and those, you know, tobacco use, lack of physical activity, unhealthy diets, and harmful use of alcohol are behind number two. Third is pandemic threats and infectious diseases like COVID-19, Ebola, new viral outbreaks, think of measles and so on. Vaccine present preventable diseases like measles and diphtheria still pose significant risks due, due to outbreaks in several regions and not enough people vaccinating. Mental health and well-being is right up there. It's negatively impacting health and outcomes, increased rates of anxiety and depression. Um, suicide, leading cause of death for young people in many regions. This is, this is uh, these are just the facts. Fragile health systems, weak healthcare infrastructure. Um, the World Health Organization projects a global shortfall of 11.1 .1 million health workers by 2030. And antimicrobial resistance, growing resistance to antibiotics from misuse of antibiotics. And there's other major threats, global inequalities, obesity, physical activity, humanitarian and crisis settings. And there's a table there sort of summarize everything. So the World Health Organization emphasizes urgent action on these multifaceted threats. So we need robust health systems, stronger public health policy, intensified global cooperation to ensure health security, equity, and resilience. Okay, so this is a good uh, sort of summary of the WHO. Now, in addition to immediate casualties from extreme weather events, like torrential rains leading to floods, flash floods even. Climate change is associated with increasing asthma, heart attacks, and strokes. It can increase, climate change can increase the likelihood of both extreme weather events and pandemics. Warmer temperatures create more hospitable habitats for disease vectors and viruses. People escaping extreme weather events may seek mass housing and shelters with other climate refugees that amplifies the spread of contagious diseases. Warmer temperatures and shorter winters allow disease-carrying insects to breed longer and travel further, facilitating infectious disease outbreaks. So they give an example, Latin America, four degrees Celsius increase in temperature. That would increase the number of dengue fever cases by eight million each year. Pollution is also linked to neurological and behavioral changes, challenges ranging from Alzheimer's disease to autism spectrum disorders. They seem to be more prevalent in populations. So an important effect of climate change is rising threat is the potential to increase self-reported anxiety and worsen uh, a population's subjective mental health. Okay, so they go on and give lots of examples. Some of the, some of the feelings of anxious, anxiety, depression, sleep disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, experiencing natural disasters that are associated with increasing parental stress, food insecurity, family violence. So there's all these knock-on or cascading effects. Okay, uh, so there's a lot in here. So let's go down to see the survey. Um, I just wanted to give you a broad overview of this guy. 
Okay, so surveys, uh, he, these are the, this is a sample of the population of 2,000 people that they surveyed. Um, you know, the breakdown in gender, race, parental status, education level, age, relationship status, and, you know, household income. So those are, that data is all um, correlated and stuff. And then you get, let's go down to the, um, these are some of the questions. How familiar are you with climate change? Um, your political affiliations. When do you think climate change will start harming you and your friends and family? Like in one to five years, in 51 to 100 years. How often do you hear about climate change in the media? How often do you discuss it with the family? The, and, and so on, okay? And then there's all the results. So the results are very detailed. Um, basically, you know, the more you know about climate change, the more anxiety you can get. But when you, if you take action, join an NGO, donate, to watch and donate to the Paul Beckwith uh, Climate Channel to, you know, those things can all reduce anxiety, according to this report. Um, you know, action is the antidote to despair. Um, okay, uh, now it turns out that a lot of the people that are less anxious are climate deniers, and the question is, um, you know, is climate denial a psychological, emotional mechanism to reduce one's anxiety? You know, deep down a person might, you know, sense, realize that something's going on with the climate, but by denying it and joking about it, etc., you can reduce anxiety. Okay, so this is a problem. So um, let's go down. I'm not going to show you all of this data. We'll just go down to the um, conclusions. Okay, so media exposure to climate change information is associated with higher level of self-reported climate anxiety, but that self-defined level of knowledge about climate change was not significantly related to climate anxiety likelihood. In other words, knowing a lot more about climate change doesn't necessarily raise your anxiety. Um, these results may be related to climate anxious individuals or have significantly higher likelihood to see climate change information as confusing, overwhelming, or hard to understand. Right? If you think climate, you know, if you think climate is like this, confusing, overwhelming, hard to understand, then you have more anxiety. If you kind of understand the basics and try to figure out some of the underlying science, which I try to describe in, you know, layman's, uh, everyday person's no jargon language on my videos, um, it can actually reduce anxiety. Those who reported climate anxiety were significantly more likely to indicate that more information about climate change's causes, effects, and current efforts would reduce their anxiety. Okay, so, so do me a favor. If each of you watching this video uh, sends a link uh, to one person, then, you know, if everybody did that, then I could significantly increase the number of viewerships for my channel. So I'm really relying on people, you know, if they like what they see and hear and think it helps them understand the world better, then please share it to, to friends and colleagues. Developing and distributing straightforward climate change information can reduce maladaptive climate anxiety associated with media exposure by ensuring that these individuals remain accurately informed about the issue. Strategies, strategies utilizing the media to combat such climate anxiety must also consider the challenge of absorbing intense, often discouraging climate change information and providing factual information that's not daunting or overwhelming. Okay, so, you know, it's, 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 it's an open question. You know, more research, they say more research is needed to explore the relationship between media exposure knowledge and feelings of climate anxiety, as well as which adaptations may most effectively reduce self-perceived climate anxiety and its association with media. And putting your head in the sand is maybe okay temporarily for a few days or a week, but you can't do it for your entire life. 
There's different coping strategies and community approaches. Community is very, very important. Okay, so there's, um, so there's positive and negative effects of climate anxiety. Climate anxiety about climate change can be reduced through behavioral strategies like volunteering and information campaigns. Self-reported climate anxiety is, can be a motivating factor, encouraging people to act as well as a damaging condition, reducing quality of life. Okay, so this is a very sort of important thing. Um, you know, pe encouraging people to volunteer to reduce their climate anxiety is very important. And you can talk to many people who do a tremendous amount of work in volunteer organizations and talk to them about how, you know, anxious they were about climate change before they started the volunteer work. Part of the motivation for the volunteer work was the higher anxiety people were experiencing. So in recent years, the damaging effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and mitigation effects, um, also climate change anxiety has resulted in broad increases in anxiety, depression, stress, and worry. And the COVID-19 pandemic necessitated rapid online mental health service delivery and those same services can address climate anxiety. Mentioned women and young people show a likely, greater likelihood of reporting climate anxiety. Um, so messages to um, combat this should be, you know, proportionately geared to, to women and youth. Um, politically conservative white males were more likely than any other Americans to deny climate change which may influence apathy towards the climate or less willingness to report climate anxiety. So the, the male ego can stop them from reporting climate anxiety and they, those people can often just, they, they deal with it by denial, denial, denial. Okay, so, so there's lots of interesting things in this study, but once again, with studies like this, often there's more questions resulting that than, than answers in this type of study. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention and uh, there's many references about climate change and anxiety and many countries, other countries have their own studies or studies on the global situation, etc. cetera. Uh, but many people, if you talk to many people in the US uh, this summer specifically, there seems to be torrential rain events leading to flooding and flat, uh, flash flooding you know, all across the country, you know, with uh, many casualties occurring. Um, anyway, thank you for once again listening to my video. Please go to paulbeckwith.net and donate to PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.